In this After Effects video, we're gonna talk about four techniques to creating clean intros. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So this is gonna be a cool little video because we're gonna be talking about doing motion graphic intros and I'm gonna provide four step-by-step -step techniques to creating these clean intros. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in the video and let's get started. So in our first step, we're gonna create a clean logo animation. All right, so here we are in our main composition and the only thing we have here is a white background and our logo. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna animate our logo. So what I like to do when doing logo animation for motion graphics is I like to incorporate it within a motion graphic element like a shape. So what we're gonna do here is say, we're gonna grab like the rectangle tool here at the top and we're gonna click on the word fill and we're gonna set it to none, click okay. Click on the word stroke, set it to solid color and click okay. From here, what we're gonna do is make sure no layer is selected and we're gonna draw a box over our logo like this. And you can change the size of the stroke by here at the top where it says stroke width. You can change it. I'm gonna keep it at about 26. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my logo layer and our new box here. Go to window align and tap over here. And we're gonna center this up with the center uh, buttons here. And this is right in the middle of each other like this. And if I need to make any changes to the stroke width, I can do that right now. Now that we have a little bit of a design here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both these layers again and I'm going to layer pre-compose and we can call it box logo. Great. And then I'm going to hit S on my keyboard along with shift R and shift P. So we have scale position and rotation here. And from here, what I'm going to do is add a keyframe for all three of these properties. And I'm going to move these keyframes forward to about one second or so. And then I'm going to set the scale down to zero. And I'm going to rotate this by you know about 90 degrees or so. And we'll get this animation coming in from the center. And then from over here, I'm gonna go to two seconds and I'm gonna position this over to the left so we have some room for some titles a little bit later on. And then I'll move forward here to maybe about a second or so. And I'll bring the X position over so we have some room for some titles a little bit later. And then I'm gonna set the rotation actually to about 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees doesn't really matter. And it's gonna be rotated like this. So essentially this is what we have at the moment. So obviously if you're working with a logo, you don't want it to be you know, crooked like this. So what we'll do is go into the box logo here and we're gonna rotate our logo uh, by hitting R on a keyboard for rotation. A lot of keyframe for this and we'll bring this keyframe backward in time and we will rotate this to the other direction. So this will be positive 90 degrees. So if you did negative 90 degrees, this will be positive 90 degrees. Go back into our main composition and it's basically just like that. And then we'll go to the middle keyframes here and make sure that those keyframes align up correctly. And also if we want, we can also go back into our logo composition here. We get S-Rank keyboard for scale and we'll just scale this up. We'll make, bring that keyframe forward in time and set the scale down to 0%. So now we'll just get something like that. So we'll go back into our main composition. So we just get the box and our logo will scale up in there and then we'll do this rotation. Boom, just like that. Now this entire animation is linear and it's at one speed. So what I want to do here is select all of our keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy, easy keyframes. And this is a good way to just variate the speed just by a little bit. So now we just have our logo coming in like this and that's essentially what we have at the moment and it looks good. Of course, creating these intros can be a lot of fun, but at the same time, it can be very time consuming and help to save you a ton of time on all your After Effects projects. Video Hive is currently having their Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale so you can get items up to 50 percent off right now for the next few days and this includes some of my favorite products that i use on this channel like toko which is 750 motion graphics that you can bring into any after effects project file and you can be able to build intros and other motion graphics within a matter of seconds handy seamless transitions pack where you can apply some of the top of line transitions to your footage within a few seconds and so much more so go ahead and check the links in the video description and it'll take you to some of these packs where you can save a ton of money and also help you save a ton of time on your future after effects projects next up on our list is kind of optional but if you have any titles we're going to animate our titles next okay so next we'll work with our titles so we'll come here grab the textile tool and we'll type out our title so i'll do sunduck film so i typed up my title and the title i'm using is beat baz new Ooh nice and centered for our logo. So what we'll do here is we're gonna open this up this title and we're gonna animate and we're gonna add a position parameter. And now I recently did a tutorial on how to use the animate tab completely. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna learn more about this animate tab because we're just gonna use this one parameter in this video. 
So what we'll do here, where's this position, we're going to bring down the Y position just like this. Then we'll come here to range selector, and right when it rolls out like this, we will add a keyframe for start, we'll move forward by a second, and we'll set the start to 100%, and right now we have it for each letter. Perhaps I don't want that, so we'll come here to advanced tab, and we'll set it where it says uh, based on characters, we'll set it to words. So it'll just animate upward based on the words. And then of course, we can make them both easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. All right, so right now we have our title animation in here and it's totally fine, but our title just hangs in there and it's not good. So what we'll do here is we'll pre-compose our title and we'll just call it title. And then what we'll do is we'll grab the rectangle tool, make sure your title layer is selected and we will draw out this mask right underneath our box like this. And this will only animate in once it's inside the mask, so it's not gonna be there before you know the entire animation starts. Our logo and title are now in play, but you know, this animation by itself isn't as interesting. So right now we're gonna talk about creating accent animations to make this scene more interesting. All right, so this animation is looking all good, but now we need to add some extra animation here to make this good and interesting, right? So what we can do here is say, grab a shape here. We'll grab the ellipse tool and we'll keep it fill off the stroke on and we'll click and hold down shift on keyboard, draw out a complete circle like this. And we might want to make the stroke width a little bit smaller. So maybe down to six pixels. So now we have this circle in here and you know, there it is. So now we want to animate this, of course. So we're going to add some just unique explosions in here. So, so what we'll do here is we'll control click the pan behind tool here at the top. So this will center the anchor point within that circle. And then we'll open up the shape layer one and we'll go in here to begin our timeline and we'll hit S ring keyboard for scale. And we will bring this keyframe forward in time just by a few frames and we'll set the scale down to 0%. And now we got this and we'll maybe stretch out this keyframe just by a little bit more and then we'll open up shape layer one again come here to the stroke come here to the lips one and we'll open up the stroke one we'll add a keyframe for stroke width and we will set go to the last scale keyframe down here and set the stroke width down to zero so now we have our exploding circle right here and what we're going to want to do here is maybe just trim up the back end here and so we know it's going to be this long and then what we'll do here select the shape layer go to edit duplicate and we can just move it around, maybe offset it by a frame or so. So now we'll have about two circles here. And we'll continue to duplicate this just to put more design around our entire, you know, composition. We can variate it by a little bit. So I went ahead and quickly duplicated everything here. We have 24 uh, circle explosions just like this. And of course you can do this with any other shape than just circles, but we'll keep it just as circles here. And this adds just a little bit more detail to our entire you know, composition here. And one last thing I wanna do is maybe animate the actual background here. Uh, so we have a little bit of movement going on. So what we could do is say, grab the ellipse tool here and we'll make sure no layer is selected. And we'll come here to fill and we'll set it to white, click okay. And we'll click on the word stroke and we'll set it to none, click okay. And we'll draw out an entire circle like this, nice and big. And we'll make sure to center this within the center of our composition. And then what we'll do here with our circle, we'll hit S ring keyboard for scale, a lot of keyframe for it. Move it forward by a few frames and set it down to zero. And we'll make sure we'll put this layer at the bottom of our composition. Come here to the background and just delete it. And then of course, make sure that the anchor point is in the center of the circle. So control double click the pan behind tool. So that's in the center of the composition. And of course, make the, and of course, make both these keyframes easy, ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. So this is essentially what we have and there's a nice level of minimal detail here with our motion graphics. So now we have all the animation out of the way, but now I want to circle back and talk about the color palette to create a visually pleasing composition. All right, so now we have our animation here, but one thing I want to touch upon here is color palette. So right now we only have two colors, which really aren't colors, they're black and white. So we have a two-tone palette here and, you know, when you do motion graphics simple like this, it's good to have it, you know, on a minimum tone, you don't want to have motion graphics going like crazy. So, you know, we can add a little extra variation to this. So maybe we'll grab, say, our title here. We'll go to Effect, Generate, Fill. And if we want, we can do like a dark gray. I think that always looks nice, a dark gray, not a complete black. And we can copy it and paste it to our logo. And that looks good. Maybe we can grab our, you know, motion graphics here, the circle explosions, select them all, hold down Shift on your keyboard, go to the stroke color, and maybe we could do like a very nice dark blue here and put like a nice little touch on our graphics. And then for our background, maybe we'll go to generate gradient ramp. 
and we'll set it from linear ramp to radial ramp and we'll bring down the starter ramp to the center of our composition and we'll set the black to a white and we'll do the end of color to do like a little bit of a lighter gray like this and we can increase the ramp scatter and we can bring down the end of ramp by a little bit and this will create a nice little gradient here and it'll make the entire overall motion graphics just a little bit more interesting and of course if you want to make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers and turn it on the top you might need to go back into some of those compositions to turn on motion blur so make sure you do that and here's currently what we have and it looks really good so those were my four techniques of creating a clean motion graphic intro. Hope you guys were able to take away a few techniques from this video. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. Also, you can hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating. <laughs>